Hey, this is Mark, AKA Sauce Stash, and on today's episode of Eat Kindly With Me, we're gonna be making some seriously awesome plant-based bake unwrapped filet mignons. <laughs> Before we get started, I'm Sauce Dash and I run the plant-based cooking show Sauce Dash here on YouTube. It's a plant-based cooking show where I find new and unique ways to make plant-based foods, mostly meats, better. I like to explore what the food industry is doing as a whole with plant-based cooking. Some of the unique ingredients, some of the new discoveries, some of the new ways plant-based meats are processed and made, and I like to find those ingredients and see if I can replicate them at home. Sometimes I like to take what's considered cooking and take it a little bit too far and push it into the realm of science, but hey, I always love to have fun with it. Now, I love making plant-based bacon. That is where my journey started. I love making rice paper bacon, daikon bacon, gluten bacon, seitan bacon, every kind of bacon that you could possibly imagine. I have tried it, I have made it. I've came up with different bake un recipes and variations for their flavorings and broths. And, and wow, I've exhausted every effort to make the best plant-based bacon that I possibly can make, and I'm still going. So that's why today we're gonna to be making a seitan steak and we're gonna give it a little bit of a twist with a bacon flavor, like your bacon wrapped filet mignon would be. We're gonna then wrap it with a rice paper bacon skin and we're gonna fry it around all sides, give it a nice sear and make it this beautiful succulent bacon wrapped filet mignon steak, all plant-based. So let's get moving. Now, a filet mignon is supposed to be juicy and succulent and tender, and to do that, we're gonna be making that using gluten, specifically vital wheat gluten. This one here that I'm using is Bob's Red Mill Vital Wheat Gluten. Now, you can use any vital wheat gluten. It'll all work. This is the way that we're gonna do it. We're gonna start in a blender. Now, in the blender, we're gonna start by adding our flavorings first. The very first thing I'm gonna be using is a beef flavor broth. This specific beef flavor broth mix is made by Shengi. Any beef flavored broth mix will work in this. Uh, you just wanna kinda follow the directions to make like the broth, the amount that they use, and use your best judgment. On this one, it's about two teaspoons of beef flavor broth to make a bowl of soup. So I'm gonna be using about two teaspoons of this to make our steaks. Two teaspoons cocoa powder. One tablespoon beetroot powder. Now I love to use mushroom seasoning or mushroom extract as part of my umami. It's the, one of my signatures that I love to use. This is a massive flavor enhancer. I find these at my local Asian markets. You can find them online. They go by tons of different brand names. You just wanna look for a product that has mushroom extract and dried mushrooms in them. If for some reason you can't find this, feel free to just substitute it with some nutritional yeast. You're gonna get a very similar amount of glutamate or savory flavors in either one of them. Uh, this one I just feel like packs a little bit more of a punch, but nutritional yeast will serve you just fine. One tablespoon mushroom extract. One of the signature flavors of beef is iron. Uh, to replicate that irony taste, we're gonna be using one teaspoon of black strap molasses. That's gonna give us a very strong irony taste mixed with that glutamate mushroom seasoning, mushroom powder, you end up with a very steaky, very meaty tasting product. It's pretty wild. Now, if you don't wanna use or can't find blackstrap molasses, you can't find the mushroom powder and don't feel like using nutritional yeast, you can actually sub all of that for Marmite. Use about a tablespoon of Marmite in place of the mushroom extract and in place of the blackstrap molasses. You'll have a very good flavor right there just using Marmite. I love using Marmite. You can even kind of double it. Use a tablespoon and a half if you like. Next, we're just gonna be doing a drop or two of liquid smoke. We don't wanna go too far. This is just to add a touch of smokiness to the flavor, give it a little bit more of a, a bit steaky feeling. And then last, we're just gonna add one cup of cold water. We're gonna give this a quick blend. Just wanna give this a taste and it should have a nice steaky kind of flavor to it. There's a little bit of that cocoa flavor going on right now, but that's okay. It's all gonna change once it cooks. So now before we add our vital wheat gluten, I'm gonna get our fat slurry ready. It's what's gonna make this juicy and succulent. Our fat slurry just consists of a quarter cup of starch. I'm specifically using wheat starch, but corn starch would work fine, along with one tablespoon of olive oil. And they're just gonna slowly stream in some cold water while mixing until it becomes a paste a little bit thicker than a pancake dough. It ended up being about like an eighth of a cup of water. I'd say that's about what turned it into a nice slurry here. 
uh, this is gonna be really good. It's what's gonna work itself into the crevices of the gluten. It's gonna find its way through all of the cracks and creases. And then when we cook this, it's gonna firm up into like a fat layer. It's gonna be really cool. So now to our blender, let's add one and a half cups of gluten, and we're just gonna pulse this together. It should break apart into a nice gluten ball. And you can really see how this comes together to where it almost looks like ground beef, just minus the fat. That's what the slurry's for. Now, I don't want this to have a ton of time to rest. I want this to almost immediately start to cook. Uh, if we give it too much time to rest, then these little pieces that are all broken apart, uh, they'll start to form together, and that's not what we want. We want these like strands that you could see here, and these strands are what forms our steak strands to give us like that meaty texture. So now just give your slurry just a little whisk up to make sure that nothing's settled, starches like to settle, and then you're just gonna pour this over your steak, allow it to work itself down in to those gluten strands. And then all we're gonna do is kind of pull and fold over to work everything through. And we're gonna keep all of the strands going in the same direction and just knead this into the meat, making kind of like a log. But all we wanna do is just make sure that it's all formed together into one kind of steak and then kind of compress it into a really tightly formed little burrito. So now let's just wrap this up tightly, as tight as you can get it. It needs to be tight. Otherwise you will not get a steak, you'll get like a, a cake. Now I used a ton of extra parchment paper to be able to twist this into a sausage. If you have a three and a half inch ring mold or you have multiple of them, you can actually do this next step in the ring mold. At this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap it in uh, some foil. I'm not looking for that perfect circle, but as close as we can get. Now that our steak is nice and wrapped really tight, we're gonna throw this into a steamer. I'm gonna steam it covered for about an hour. Now, depending on the size of your steamer, make sure you check for your water. You don't want your steamer to go dry. Make sure that it has a constant steam for an hour. When we get closer towards the end of the steaming is when we're gonna start making our bacon. Okay, so it's been about an hour. We're just gonna remove the steak, the little burrito from the steamer. And I'm just gonna use just a cup, like a soup container, um, or anything that's gonna allow you to help this kind of stay upright. This might seem a little bit silly, but essentially the gluten is going to relax a little bit as this cools down. But I just want this here, just so that way it doesn't flatten out from laying on its side. Uh, keeping it upright is gonna help it keep its shape a little bit better. It's gonna help its texture stay a little bit better as well. So let's work on our bacon. This is gonna be really simple because we're only gonna do about two or three steaks here, so we only need one sheet of rice paper. Let's make our bacon seasoning really quick. That broth is going to be simple. So we're gonna start with a quarter cup of soy sauce. I just like to use low sodium because this is quite a bit of soy sauce in this recipe, and these rice paper sheets gonna soak it up a lot. So if you're concerned about your sodium, make sure you do low sodium. Two tablespoons olive oil, one tablespoon of the mushroom extract. But if you're not gonna use the mushroom seasoning, we can probably go a little bit extra glutamate in it and use about three tablespoons of nutritional yeast. One teaspoon liquid smoke, one tablespoon maple syrup, and lastly, a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. What I'm gonna do is just whisk this up. Now, normally if I was making the rice paper bacon, uh, I would always cut them into strips, wet the strips, and then soak the strips in the bacon flavoring. But in this scenario, I want the bacon strips to be a little bit denser. I don't want them to be hydrated first. I want them to be fully hydrated in the bacon flavoring. So we're gonna cut out thicker than what you would think, maybe about just a hair over an inch of the rice paper into strips, and then just drop the strips right into the flavoring broth. Now, I just don't wanna let the rice paper just kinda of rest in there. I wanna make sure that they're completely fully submerged in all of this bacon flavoring and seasoning and sauces. So while we're letting our bacon rest, let's go ahead and unwrap our steak. Like I said, we're realistically looking for two good steaks, and then you could save the small ends pieces, chop them up, you can even grind them back up to use as beef for something else. <laughs> Just from the feel of this, 
I can already tell you, I am so excited about the way that this came out. This is going to be perfect. So I'm just gonna chop the ends off and then cut it in half and we have ourselves two steaks. Now at this point, we just have to wrap our steaks in the bacon rice paper. We might need to do two per steak. So we're gonna throw some toothpicks in it. So that way it holds on. And now we have our bake unwrapped filet mignons. This is like a meaty little brick of protein here. And before you sear these, you just wanna season them up a little bit with a little bit of salt, some fresh cracked black pepper, and some garlic powder. Just do that on both sides. So we also have a decent amount of bacon seasoning left. So what we're gonna do at this point is I'm just gonna add about two cups of water to this broth. I'm gonna whisk it up and I'm gonna set it aside. We're gonna fry these filet mignons in about a tablespoon of oil in a skillet. We're gonna make sure that they get fried on all sides, even the sides. Make sure that they're fried on the round sides of the bacon and get the bacon nice and crispy and bubbly. Once that all looks like it's seared all the way around, then we're gonna add our bacon flavored broth with the water mixture into it. We're gonna pour that into the saucepan, throw this onto a low heat, cover it, and let them simmer in that liquid for about 15 or 20 minutes. If the liquid starts to seem like it's cooking out, just add more liquid. That's what's gonna make these steaks super juicy. And then here they are. Look at these filet mignon steaks wrapped in like a bake on skin. <laughs> these are gonna be awesome. I'm gonna bring Monica in to try these. Little bacon skin on the outside. Cheers. You got a bunch of bacon skin on yours. Mm. This is awesome. This is really good. Meaty and steaky. Has a really nice bite to it. Taste the bacon on the outside. You have the bacon flavor. Mm. Mm. Really good. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever tried the rice paper bacon. It's really awesome. If you haven't, you have to. Really good. And make sure you give me a follow over at Sawstash. Click the like button. Thanks for watching. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. This is what we're having for dinner tonight. Yes. Mm -hmm.